Hello, welcome back to Meditating the Word. My name is Cherie. I'm your host and fellow traveler on this journey through the Bible in a year. Whether you've been reading the Bible for years, or if this is your first time to read it from Genesis to Revelation, I'm so glad to have you with us. We are in the ninth month of our journey, and we still have a lot of people to meet and places to visit. So let's jump into today's passage. This is day 246. Today we are reading Ezekiel chapters 23 and 24. I'm reading from the World English Bible. Let's get started. The Book of Ezekiel, chapters 23 and 24. The Lord's word came again to me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother. They played the prostitute in Egypt. They played the prostitute in their youth. Their breasts were fondled there and their youthful nipples were caressed there. Their names were Ohola, the elder, and Oholiba, her sister. They became mine, and they bore sons and daughters. As for their names, Samaria is Ohola, and Jerusalem is Oholiba. Ohola played the prostitute when she was mine. She doted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors, who were clothed with blue governors and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding on horses. She gave herself as a prostitute to them. All of them were the choicest men of Assyria. She defiled herself with the idols of whoever she lusted after. She hasn't left her prostitution since leaving Egypt, for in her youth they lay with her. They caressed her youthful nipples, and they poured out their prostitution on her. Therefore, I delivered her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians on whom she doted. These uncovered her nakedness. They took her sons and her daughters, and they killed her with a sword. She became a byword among women, for they executed judgments on her. Her sister, Oholiba, saw this, yet... She was more corrupt in her lusting than she, and in her prostitution, which was more depraved than the prostitution of her sister, she lusted after the Assyrians, governors and rulers, her neighbors, clothed most gorgeously, horsemen riding on horses, all of them desirable young men. I saw that she was defiled. They both went the same way. She increased her prostitution, for she saw men portrayed on the wall, the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with red, dressed with belts on their waists, with flowing turbans on their heads, all of them looking like princes, after the likeness of the Babylonians in Chaldea, the land of their birth. As soon as she saw them, she lusted after them and sent messengers to them into Chaldea, the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their prostitution. She was polluted with them, and her soul was alienated from them. So she uncovered her prostitution and uncovered her nakedness. Then my soul was alienated from her, just like my soul was alienated from her sister. Yet she multiplied her prostitution, remembering the days of her youth in which she had played the prostitute in the land of Egypt. She lusted after her lovers, whose flesh is as the flesh of donkeys, and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Thus you called to memory, thus you called to memory the lewdness of your youth in the caressing of your nipples by the Egyptians because of your youthful breasts. Therefore, O holy Ba, the Lord says, Behold, I will raise up your lovers against you, from whom your soul is alienated, and I will bring them against you on every side, the Babylonians and all the Chaldeans, Pekod, Shoah, Koah, and all the Assyrians with them, all of them desirable young men, governors and rulers, princes and men of renown, all of them riding on horses. They will come against you with weapons, 
chariots, and wagons, and with a company of peoples. They will set themselves against you with buckler, shield, and helmet all around. I will commit the judgment to them, and they will judge you according to their judgments. I will set my jealousy against you, and they will deal with you in fury. They will take away your nose and ears. Your remnant will fall by the sword. They will take your sons and your daughters, and the rest of you will be devoured by the fire. They will also strip you of your clothes and take away your beautiful jewels. Thus I will make your lewdness to cease from you and remove your prostitution from the land of Egypt so that you will not lift up your eyes to them nor remember Egypt any more. For the Lord says, Behold, I will deliver you into the hand of them whom you hate, into the hand of them from whom your soul is alienated. They will deal with you in hatred and will take away all your labor and will leave you naked and bare. The nakedness of your prostitution will be uncovered, both your lewdness and your prostitution. These things will be done to you because you have played the prostitute after the nations and because you are polluted with their idols. You have walked in the way of your sister. Therefore, I will give her cup into your hand. The Lord says, You will drink of your sister's cup, which is deep and large. You will be ridiculed and held in derision. It contains much. You will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with the cup of astonishment and desolation, with the cup of your sister Samaria. You will even drink it and drain it out. You will gnaw the broken pieces of it, and it will tear your breasts, for I have spoken it, says the Lord. Therefore the Lord says, Because you have forgotten me and cast me behind your back, Therefore, you shall also bear your lewdness and your prostitution. The Lord said moreover to me, Son of man, will you judge Ohola and Oholiba? Then declare to them their abominations, for they have committed adultery and blood is in their hands. They have committed adultery with their idols. They have also caused their sins whom they bore to pass through the fire to them to be devoured. Moreover, this they have done to me. They have defiled my sanctuary in the same day and have profaned my Sabbaths. For when they had slain their children to their idols, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. And behold, they have done this in the middle of my house. Furthermore, you sisters have sent for men who come from far away, to whom a messenger was sent, and behold, they came, for whom you washed yourself, painted your eyes, decorated yourself with ornaments, and sat on a stately bed with a table prepared before it, whereupon you set my incense and my oil. The voice of a multitude being at ease was with her. With men of the common sort were brought drunkards from the wilderness, and they put bracelets on their hands and beautiful crowns on their heads. Then I said of her who was old in adulteries, Now they will play the prostitute with her, and she with them. They went in to her as they go in to a prostitute. So they went in to Ohola and to Oholiba, the lewd women. Righteous men will judge them with the judgment of adulteresses and with the judgment of women who shed blood, because they are adulteresses, and blood is in their hands. For the Lord says, I will bring up a mob against them, and will give them to be tossed back and forth and robbed. The company will stone them with stones, and dispatch them with their swords. They will kill their sons and their daughters, and burn up their houses with fire. Thus I will cause the lewdness to cease out of the land, that all women may be taught not to be lewd like you. They will recompense your lewdness on you, and you will bear the sins of your idols. Then you will know that I am the Lord. 
Again, in the ninth year, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, the Lord's word came to me, saying, Son of man, write the name of the day, this same day. The king of Babylon drew close to Jerusalem this same day. Utter a parable to the rebellious house and tell them, The Lord says, Put the cauldron on the fire, put it on, and also pour water into it. Gather its pieces into it, even every good piece, the thigh and the shoulder. Fill it with the choice bones. Take the choice of the flock, and also a pile of wood for the bones under the cauldron. Make it boil well. Yes, let its bones be boiled within it. Therefore the Lord says, Woe to the bloody city, to the cauldron whose rust is in it, and whose rust hasn't gone out of it. Take out of it piece after piece, without casting lots for it. For the blood she shed is in the middle of her. She set it on the bare rock. She didn't pour it out on the ground to cover it with dust, that it may cause wrath to come up to take vengeance. I have set her blood on the bare rock, that it should not be covered. Therefore the Lord says, Woe to the bloody city! I also will make the pile great. Heap on the wood, make the fire hot, boil the meat well, make the broth thick, and let the bones be burned. Then set it empty on its coals, that it may be hot, and its bronze may burn, and that its filthiness may be molten in it, that its rust may be consumed. She is weary with toil, yet her great rust, rust by fire, doesn't leave her. In your filthiness is lewdness, because I have cleansed you and you weren't cleansed. You won't be cleansed from your filthiness any more until I have caused my wrath toward you to rust. I, the Lord, have spoken it. It will happen, and I will do it. I won't go back. I won't spare. I won't repent. According to your ways and according to your doings, they will judge you, says the Lord. Also, the Lord's word came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, I will take away from you the desire of your eyes with one stroke, yet you shall neither mourn nor weep, neither shall your tears run down. Sigh, but not aloud. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind your headdress on you, and put your sandals on your feet. Don't cover your lips, and don't eat mourner's bread. So I spoke to the people in the morning, and at evening my wife died. So I did in the morning as I was commanded. The people asked me, Won't you tell us what these things mean to you, that you act like this? Then I said to them, The Lord's word came to me, saying, Speak to the house of Israel. The Lord says, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the pride of your power, the desire of your eyes, and that which your soul pities, and your sons and your daughters, whom you have left behind, will fall by the sword. You will do as I have done. You won't cover your lips or eat mourner's bread. Your turbans will be on your heads and your sandals on your feet. You won't mourn or weep, but you will pine away in your iniquities and moan one toward another. Thus Ezekiel will be assigned to you. According to all that he has done, you will do. When this comes, then you will know that I am the Lord. You, son of man, shouldn't it be in the day when I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that whereupon they set their heart, their sons and their daughters, that in that day, he who escapes will come to you to cause you to hear it with your ears. In that day your mouth will be opened to him who has escaped, and you will speak and be no more mute. So you will be assigned to them. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Father God, what you desire from us is faithfulness 
as you are faithful, yet we fall short again and again in little ways, too busy to read your word one day, or we don't spend time in prayer, or we don't do the things you've laid on our hearts, or we spend time in activities that aren't uplifting, or we allow bad habits to remain in our lives, or we trust in our own strength instead of yours. Help us, Father, to be more faithful to you. May we listen intently for the whispers of Holy Spirit directing us in the way we should go. Thank you for your patience with us and for your faithful love. Amen. Well, there we have it. Another chapter in our journey through the Bible. It isn't always easy to understand, but remember, it isn't a race, and each word we read is a seed planted in our hearts. Thank you for being part of this journey. Join us tomorrow and every day as we continue our journey through the pages of the Bible. This is Cherie signing off for the day. Remember, you are in my prayers. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.